Thanks, you guys. That was amazing. I learned a lot. I'm Katie Payne. I was Roger's first wife, the mother of his four children, John, Holly, Laura, and Sam. And we have eight grandchildren. As John said, living with dad was like living with the Pied Piper. There was no end to the visitors who'd drop in to get a swig of his attention. Stories, projects, ideas, jokes, and style. Soulmates from summers in the Greenwood Music Camp. Comrades from the Atlantic and Pacific field research. Young, old, wealthy, poor, solemn, hilarious, each in his own way nourished and nourishing friendship with Roger. I was his first wife. We met while performing Bach's Passion according to St. Matthew it at Cornell with him playing the cello, I singing in the chorus, and we were married in 1960. By 65, we were in the thick of things with four children and thousands of whales on our minds. Roger turned our back barn into what we called the lab. This housed his research team and project and was closed to nobody. Beware, to drop in is to risk becoming a collaborator in whatever project you encounter when the door is opened. Today, when Roger is being honored for his contributions to conservation, I am remembering the whole lot of us, immersed in tasks and the magic that bound us together. If the first magic was friendship, the second was the urge to get out the truth. Roger did not believe in secrecy. When he heard the singing whale that Frank Watlington had recorded near Bermuda in 1964, and realized <clears throat> that those rich, beautiful phrases were communication among whales. His reaction was not to hide a discovery that whalers might use to inform their slaughter, but to publicize the discover. He trusted humanity to listen, and that trust is the third magic. Soon, the publicly available record song to the humpback whale was allowing listeners worldwide to marvel at whales' musical nature. And that added to dozens of recording expeditions by various people in various times and places prepared the path for your work and mine. And thank you for your work. Roger loved to talk and had a quirky way of expanding ideas beyond their logical boundaries. <laughs> Why not spread your wings were typical Roger messages that delighted me even as they frustrated some of his critics. I'll end with an example of his own wing spreading. He sent this out in a brochure that accompanied a lecture in 1979. Perhaps, he started modestly, perhaps humpback whales express their emotions through singing. He goes on. One of the strangest messages yet attempted through music was transmitted in August of 1977 when two spacecraft called Voyagers 1 and 2 started on a trip that would take them close to Uranus, Jupiter, and Saturn. Their momentum will carry them out of the solar system, and they will spend the rest of their lives estimated at over 1.2 billion years wandering elsewhere in the galaxy. On the off chance that they are encountered by some other space-faring civilization, 
messages were put aboard both spacecraft in the form of records containing TV pictures, greetings in many languages, and music, the works of Bach most represented. But also on the record was a cut of humpback whale song. Suppose some other being does find, find this bottle cast into the cosmic ocean. What will be communicated? After all, in addition to the literal words and pictures, there is the fact that we sent music in whale songs. Is that not an emotional message? It is, in fact, a wonderful boast to another civilization. It tells them that by the time we sent this message, we had matured enough to give the culture of another species a bit of room on board. Why not? <laughs> 